Welcome once again to another episode of RAD TV, Rights and Democracy Television. It's your monthly connection to rights and democracy, the bi-state organization committed to creating a long-lasting movement for fundamental change. Um, my name is Grant Taylor. I'm your host. I'm joined this month w um, by two fantastic guests. Uh, first to my right is Kate Logan. Um, she is the Director of Programming and Policy for Rights and Democracy. And then all the way down on the end is Laura Mastretta. So I want to say welcome to you guys and thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Grant. <laughs> um, so we were going to um, jump right into um, highlighting the um, 10 like biggest accomplishments for rights and democracy from uh, 2018. And we're going to have uh, Kate help us out with that. Yeah, it's amazing um, that it is uh, still January of 2019 because we have raced right into 2019. The legislative session has already kicked off. Um, but it's fun to um, look back on 2018 and talk about the highlights from last year. Um, number 10 on our top 10 is um, uh, RAD board member, um, RAD leader from the New North End City Councilor Ali Jeng won re-election. Um, number nine is that some of RAD's most central leaders um, from the beginning continue to be on the front lines of the resistance, um, both in the uh, capital and in Vermont. Um, Mari Cordes, who you'll hear a little bit more about below, um, Vicki Lamprin, Emily Atunin, Kate Lapp, uh, Mary Garish, Elizabeth Joyce, uh, Deutsch, and Jennifer Flynn Walker from the Center for Popular Democracy, and RAD member and photographer T.W. Collins uh, spent a bunch of time in Washington at the Senator's office engaging in civil disobedience around um, the hearings uh, for Supreme Justice last year. So that, that was uh, great to see them back in the Capitol again. Um, they had all, they're also warriors who had been there fighting to protect ACA in the prior year. Um, number eight last year uh, was a couple awesome people power tours. We had President uh, Nina Turner from Our Revolution here in Vermont who, um, and New Hampshire, who came um, in the early summer and spoke all over the, <laughs> all over both states, uh, reminding us that really everything that we love is on the line right now and that we just need to, we need to fight. She really encouraged folks to get involved in the midterm elections, both in Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, and then uh, a little bit later in the summer, we had Audie Barkin. In case you missed it, um, Audie is just an incredible uh, leader in our movement right now. Um, he has a terminal disease, and he's using the end of his life to really lead the fight uh, for health care as a human right um, and just challenge power both nationally and in every state. He made a tour across the entire country last year, starting in L.A., ending in Maine, um, and met with hundreds and hundreds of Vermonters and folks from New Hampshire um, just to, once again, just like ne uh, Senator Nina Turner, encouraging people to get involved and just kind of lay it all on the line right now. Um, number seven last year, really exciting for us here in Vermont, was passing the 15-hour minimum wage bill and uh, paid family and medical leave insurance bill, both in the House and the Senate in Vermont. Yeah. Yeah, really exciting. However, <laughs> Governor Scott vetoed both. Um, and uh, you know, galvanized people, um, really brought people out um, who decided to run for office. And we're, we uh, coordinated with other organizations like ourselves um, and parties who are aligned with these issues and had a statewide um, agenda for developing a veto-proof majority in both the House and the Senate. And we're really excited that we're going into 2019 with well over two thirds uh, majority who support both uh, raising the minimum wage and a paid family and medical leave insurance program in both the House and the Senate in Vermont. Let's cheers to that. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. That's really exciting. And yes. as a direct reaction, <laughs> right, yeah. to get it, so you veto them. 
Well, override that veto. Override. Yeah, we, we're we're we, gonna we we're can gonna, do that. We're we gonna can respond do that to that, right? Yeah, we can so. do that, and that's exactly what and like rights and democracy was built to be able to do. Yeah, is move from organizing around issues to organizing around elections. Uh, we had similar awesome victories in New Hampshire. Um, a little bit of fighting back had to be done in New Hampshire last year. We stopped a school voucher bill, you know, one of like that conservative march towards the privatization of the school system. Um, and New Hampshireites um, it, with RAD really galvanized around uh, fighting back against that voucher bill, defeated it. Um, helped pass a transgender rights bill. I think it was maybe the last uh, state in the country that hadn't um, explicitly protected transgender rights, and they won that handily. Yeah. Um, and then um, I think I'm going to, oh yeah, I get to talk a little bit more about what we did in New Hampshire a little later. Number five, um, then turning to the elections, rad champions, um, in Vermont, Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman cleaned up in his uh, re-election campaign. And um, they have this weird thing in New Hampshire called the Executive Council. The cabinet is elected in New Hampshire, mm. which is kind of cool. And rad champion Andrew Volinsky crushed it um, in his re-election campaign, uh, despite the Republicans outspending these candidates, like, a lot. Mm. I, I think three to one for Zuckerman. I'm not entirely sure about... Um, Executive Counselor Andrew Volinsky's race, but heavy opposition from Republicans and big failures. Uh, true, so it was very exciting. True showing for canvassing, door knocking, oh, yeah. phone power. banking, people power, yep. right? And yep. not lobbyist. And PAC money yeah. coming from yeah. out of state, um, which Rights is what we saw. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and then similarly, um, we saw movement candidates elected up and down the ballot um, in November. Um, our collaborative candidate training program, Lead Vermont, um, did that with a couple other C4 or a few other C4 organizations in Vermont, ended up training 32 people and five of those uh, won their election campaigns, their first time out. Um, Zach Ralph. Um, and then there were four who flipped Republican House seats. Mari Cordes ran for the second time, um, picked up a big win in Addison County. Kathleen James down in Bennington County, Sharon Fagard in Franklin County, and then Scott Campbell up in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, again, we won that veto-proof majority in uh, the Vermont House, so we've shifted the balance of power in the state. Um, and um, a highlight for RAD, um, organizing this year was in the New North End where um, <clears throat> Kurt Wright, Rep Representative Kurt Wright, a Republican who's also a city councilor here in Burlington, held his seat for well over 10 years. Um, and RAD organizer Perry Freeman really just set out against all odds um, to help get RAD endorsed candidate Bob Hooper elected and, um, and, and pulled it off. And the day after the election, uh, Kurt Wright got um, into the media and named Rights and Democracy as one of the primary organizations that was out there. He said he couldn't get away from us. And <laughs> everywhere he went, he saw Rights and Democracy. So we're, we're happy that Bob Hooper was also one of those people who flipped a Republican seat um, to help pick up the seats that we need for the veto-proof majority. Similarly, in New Hampshire, um, Rights and Democracy coordinated with a couple other progressive organizations to do a statewide door knocking campaign targeting house races. They have well over 400 representatives in the New Hampshire House of Representatives. Wow. Um, in, 20, uh, in the 2017-18 session, it was a Republican House, Republican Senate, Republican Executive Council, and of course a Republican Governor in New Hampshire. And in November, um, we contributed, I think, I think in 32 House races, um, flipped the House, flipped the Senate, flipped the Executive Council. So we're on that steady march towards winning back um, every branch of government in um, both Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, so that's really excited, yeah. exciting. And we sent two, um, two congressional uh, Democrats uh, back into the House of Representatives in U.S. Congress as well. Um, so, uh, finally, um, our number one accomplishment is uh, 
the lesson harvesting that we did in 2018 to get ready for 2019. Internally, we engaged in a process to um, develop a people power model um, for our organizing program. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, but we're gonna be, uh, we have built a new organizing program. We're in the process of hiring a new organizing director for the state of Vermont. And then we're gonna be hiring organizers who are based throughout the state, who are gonna be organizing around a broad platform of issues and then building that into our electoral organizing program so that we're organizing all year round all across the state. So we're really excited to start building an even stronger people power presence throughout Vermont. Very cool. That's awesome. Yay! <laughs> 2018. Cheers to 2018. Yeah. yeah. Um, now we're getting started with another another year here. Mm -hmm. Setting up for 2019. Um, and so to do that, uh, you were in Montpelier mm -hmm. on January 9th. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm spending a lot of time in Montpelier this year. Um, you know, we're working on the minimum wage, paid family medical leave insurance. Uh, we're going to be bringing, we help draft a bill. We're working with lead sponsors there to bring a bill that will help boost uh, enforcement of workers' rights without adding a big line item to the state budget. Um, so that's exciting. Um, working with strong, a big coalition around making sure that kids have clean water in their schools. Um, working again with another coalition to make sure that we have an aggressive strategy for reaching 100% renewable energy in the state. Um, and we kicked it all off on the first day of the legislative session with what we called a People Power Lobby Day. Um, we started the day off with Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman who greeted all of our guests. Um, then we did a grassroots lobbying training right there in the state house. Um, and then we had a people power platform uh, panel <laughs> with some of our um, greatest allies um, who all have legislative agendas, folks that are, are, res are your resources, um, my resources in the state house so that we can um, keep coordinating with each other across a really broad people's agenda in the, in the legislature this year. So we, um, we co-organized that day with our good friends, 350 Vermont. Um, and then we held a great panel with the Vermont Coalition for Ethnic and Social Equity in Schools, uh, Vermont Coalition for Disability Rights, Green Mountain Self Advocates, ACLU Vermont, Migrant Justice, um, Justice for All, the Vermont Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, uh, the Vermont Natural Resources Council, um, and uh, uh, the NEA, I'm trying to remember if there's anybody else I'm forgetting. Well, so this oh, is... Oh, LGBTQIA Alliance. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had a great day all there together, and we also got to see some of those rad champions get sworn in. That's, uh, I was just thinking as you were listing all the different groups about how we um, have been talking for a couple of years now about how broad the movements are and how interconnected everything is. So it's great to see all these different groups working together yeah. to put, you know, the again, grassroots pressure on people. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have a plan. Um, we're going to be working together. Um, this year to make sure that we're connecting all of our members into the issues that they care most about um, and making sure that people are learning the skills that they need. We have a real opportunity both in Vermont and New Hampshire because our legislatures are pretty accessible. You don't have to go through a metal detector. You could like leave your laptop in the coat room and no one will steal it. Um, you know, the legislators don't have staffs. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to go through a, jump through a bunch of hoops to reach um, your own legislators or the people who sit on the committees who are list, uh, you know, thinking about the bills um, that we're gonna pass on a number of different issues. I mean, so, some of them even have their like cell phone numbers on the website. Yeah. So if you check out the Vermont Legislature website, um, you may be able to call them right at home. <laughs> yeah. If you, um, if you do have any trouble talking to your legislator, um, talk to Rights and Democracy. We will <laughs> help you yeah. with that problem. Yeah, absolutely. So we'd love to see you in the State House. <laughs> cool. Um, well, that sounds great. Um, we're going to jump into another really exciting thing that we're doing. It's kind of a, kind of a little bit along those lines of putting that political pressure on uh, on the system. Um, we're going to be doing that right here in the city of Burlington. 
um, with some city council endorsements, which uh, is a great process that we've been working on for a couple of years. And uh, we're going to talk to Laura about that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so Right to Democracy, you know, has been endorsing candidates in races all across the state, but also right here in Burlington, um, city council and mayoral elections over the last couple of years. Um, and so it's really exciting. You know, this year's um, city election coming up on March 5th, if I'm not mistaken, is town meeting day this year. Um, we have four city council races um, where folks are, you know, running for seats. Um, it's the four districts, so Central District, North District, South District, and East District. Um, each district comprising of two of the wards. Um, and yeah, we're, it's, you know, there's really a, a very awesome progressive wave in terms of the candidates that are stepping up um, to run for these seats. We have a uh, progressive party, you know, um, endorsed candidates, I think, in every race, which is exciting. Um, there's definitely an opportunity here to, to change the balance of the city council. And so, yeah, so members of Rights and Democracy here in Burlington um, are some, a small group are part of an endorsement committee. Uh, we have gathered to weigh in on uh, the you know priorities of the city council candidates. Um, the way the process works is that our communications director Shay actually emailed out um, requests to every single candidate running for city council. So it doesn't matter what your party is. We want to hear from everybody. You know, we really want the candidate that's best for the people. And sometimes that that tends to align with certain parties. But really, we are open to everyone's. You know, to everyone t proving to us that you're here for people. Um, and we. We offered that opportunity up to everyone to answer our interview or our questionnaire to tell us what, where you stand on RAD's priorities and values. Uh, we had five candidates return their questionnaires. Um, and we have reviewed those questionnaires. Um, and we can't tell you what if any decisions were made yet, but there'll definitely be something coming out over email, Facebook, all sorts of avenues of communication soon of the, the four candidates that um, the Rights and Democracy Endorsement Committee really feels are running um, you know, in the best interests of the people of Burlington. Uh, and we're excited to make that announcement because that's gonna really open up a lot of opportunities for members to engage in these races and help these candidates win. Um, you know, RAD will be, you know, definitely sharing information on Facebook and really trying to promote these candidates uh, through their platforms, but also it's really going to take uh, people, RAD members and others in the community to get involved with these campaigns, volunteer for them, you know, door knock for them, talk to your neighbors, donate money, um, share their information on Facebook so that we can make sure that we have a city council here in Burlington that's really about making sure we're investing in the people of Burlington um, and not selling off, you know, our resources out of Public town. Spaces, and yeah. yeah, you know, just all the issues that RAD members really care about. Um, we've got some candidates who are really willing to stand up for those issues and really want to put the work in to uh, making Burlington, you know, the people-powered city we all want it to be. Uh, so keep your eyes open and your ears open for those announcements. They should be coming out at the end of next week. Um, and we will definitely love to get you plugged into those campaigns. Um, there's someone in everyone's corner of the city who's worth paying attention to. So. Yeah. And so we're gonna hopefully see that kind of shift that we were looking for in those other, um, those other um, places, right? Um, representatives, um, you were saying the executive council in New Hampshire and, and in Vermont, the veto-proof majority. Uh, so we are looking to get a little bit of a shift at the city council in Burlington. And we're gonna announce those at the end of this month. And as Laura mentioned, um, be sure to mark down town meeting day on your calendars and um, know where your voting, uh, um, your polling place is. Take a look at the ballot before um, before you get there, and then step in and know what you're doing, and know who you want to vote for, and vote like a pro, and have fun doing it. <laughs> um, 
yeah, it can be a great time at the, uh, the pooling locations. And so also we'll have uh, one month, we'll have essentially February to uh, promote these candidates in your wards. So um, like Laura said, pay attention. Uh, those names will be coming out shortly and uh, we'll try to get them um, elected. <laughs> All the support they can handle. And uh, yeah, so I guess we've got a couple of minutes left and um, so we're going to talk um, about sustaining memberships and how we keep the kind of people power moving along. Yeah, um, one of um, Rights and Democracy's goal as an organization is to make sure that all of our members have the support that they need so that we can be organizing around all of the issues that our members care about most, putting people and planet first in their communities and at the state level, and even throwing down in some of these national fights like we were talking about earlier. And that all takes money. Um, we would love um, to be kind of like a community union where um, just, like a, just like a labor union, folks are paying into their labor union so that they can have the support that they need um, to be able to fight for their rights. And we would like the same kind of model. Um, it's not common among nonprofits to have a model like this, but we'd like to have the same kind of model where our staff organizers are supported by our members and our, our organizers are there to provide our members with, this, with the support that they need so that we can build the movement that we all need across the entire state. Um, and one of the ways that um, we're gonna do that, not just through donations, but through sustaining memberships. So we'd love to ask you to become a member of Rights and Democracy. I'm a sustaining member of Rights and Democracy. Um, many of the people that are running for office um, throughout the state outside of Burlington are people who came up in their political consciousness through becoming sustaining members of Rights and Democracy. And we're all working together to build a sustainable movement together. Um, and part of that is just that uh, little bit of money that we can all pitch in on a monthly basis to make sure that we have the staff that we need so that we can keep the fight moving. So yeah. please join today. You can go to our website. And very small amounts go a long ways when we amplify it through 1,000 members or 10,000 members. I mean, that's what Bernie's campaign showed us, right, in 2016. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Couple dollars a month and skyrockets. Uh, the organization can really plan on that money coming in, um, establish those staff members throughout the state. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to kind of, well, just, just make the point that the staff members um, are doing about three times the amount of work for, you know, that, that the volunteers can do, or 10 times or whatever. And, <laughs> And that they, they really push us as volunteers to do work, to, um, to be at events, to talk to our friends and family and our neighbors and to go out and do things, you know, um, phone bank and, um, and canvas. And they also actually, what's really great is they, they give us opportunities like this to, you know, come on a show or to even speak at events. I know like, um, Laura, you've like ran trainings before, you know, as a member and <laughs> yeah. stuff. So, no, I think Rights to Democracy is really an important resource. I know as an activist, um, you know, it's really nice to have a home, <laughs> an activist home in Vermont, a place I know I can go to if I want to find the right avenue for my voice to be heard, know how to make my voice heard most effectively, connect with others who care about the same issues I do, and team up and plan badass actions together and get involved um, because we all know we got to do this together because one voice is never enough so That's yeah right. so we got we kind of amplify amplify those staff members and they they certainly need the funds coming in yeah. um, every month so consider consider joining up and uh, donating some money if you can that'd be fantastic um, so I'm not sure I had a whole lot else, you know, more to say this month. Do you guys have any events? Do you know of any events that are coming up, uh, rad stuff or 
other than the in, other than the city council stuff? I think yeah, I think the big thing, um, especially for folks in the Chittenden County area, is just to be paying attention to those town meeting day races um, at the school board level, um, for sure in Burlington at the city council level, and. Um, I know we just got through an election season. You were all writing postcards, knocking doors, and your money, who knows where, um, all over the country probably, because um, it was a big deal. Uh, but it's time to get busy again. Um, <laughs> we have, there's a lot on the line for the city council race, so we hope you'll show up for uh, the Rad Endorsed candidates. Yeah. Right on. And town meeting day all over Vermont. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So even if we aren't there endorsing candidates, take a look at who's in your town. If there's anybody watching this program that's not in Burlington. <laughs> um, and uh, all right. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Grant. Yeah, it's thank awesome. you, Grant. Another good one. And uh, have fun, everybody. We'll see you guys in a, in a month. <laughs>